Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to talk about the thorny, awkward, difficult and controversial subject of expenology and why I don't think it's worth it and in the course of this video I'm going to go through five reasons why overall I wouldn't give it the time of day if you take your data seriously. Now before we go any further more so than any video i've done we're going to need to add on some seriously high-end disclaimers at the top of this video number one this video is not being made in conjunction with synology we have worked with synology here on the channel both in many many videos in the past and on the blog but it's worth highlighting one we have never received a penny from synology in all the years that we've been running now as compares number two this video is not being made with synology's cooperation this is pure are based on our opinions and our perspective of this taking into account the whole subject of storage these are our opinions not synologies we are not lawyers these are not legal statements this is all our point of view and perspective finally this video is about expenology and you utilizing it as an alternative as a synology product and why we believe it is not the same thing and why overall if you're going to go synology you should just go for a synology product and there's going to be those of you watching this that are going to say well that's good for you bully for you rob but synology sends you units well we have a lot of those units on long-term loan or short-term loan these are not products that we have been sent or we can sell ultimately these are our unprofited opinions in this video so what is exponology? Nice and simple. One of the earliest uh, kind of misnomers about exponology. Exponology is not the same as Synology Disk Station Manager. Disk Station Manager is the software that is included with every single Synology NAS. But exponology is more akin to an emulator. It is a bootloader. It is a mounting tool to host DSM on non-Synology hardware. That is ultimately it. You do see them uh, doing modifications within the Exponology crowd to allow updates and more on that later on, but ultimately they are still built on Synology proprietary software, which in turn is built on Linux, more on that later on. Um, so when you are using Exponology, just know that you're not, Exponology is not DSM. It is a mounting tool for DSM on third-party software, uh, third-party hardware, I should say, rather than uh, Synology hardware there. So let's go through what I believe to be the five main reasons why I wouldn't engage with Xpenology. Probably the most obvious one of all is to do with stability. When we're talking about our backups, when we're talking about our data, a lot of the time it is genuinely irreplaceable. We've talked about it in other videos before and data should not be measured by the cost of the device that you're putting the data into. The data and the amount you're prepared to spend on your backup should be based on the amount you would pay if it was lost. If you lost that data, how much would you pay to get it back? Like an insurance policy, that's what you should be basing it on. The cost of loss, not the cost of data itself. And when it comes to exponology, and obviously I'm looking at this with an skewed look to highlight instances on the official forum of Falgia. So obviously when you look at all of these tabs, these are part of a larger Reddit thread that's got a lot more messages. It has to be said that there are a lot of of messages and lots of subreddits and community posts not just here on reddit but on the uh, exponential forum of people who have ran updates ran individual updates or seemingly out of the blue their system has stopped functioning fully and indeed when you head to Exponology's own website they do talk about the stability of their platform and that people need to bear in mind that not only are updates from the brand not more readily available but on top of that it should not be considered fully stable and that for me is probably the most defining reason why when it comes to utilizing Xpenology instead of a Synology NAS, that you are now accepting that you are using a system that is not 100% stable, which is going to be a real deal breaker for some. And the extension of that instability goes all the way down to not only the full 
DSM mounting that Xpenology is going to do in its bootloader and, and allowing you to run it emulated style on that third party hardware. But on top of that, the individual applications. So all of those individual applications are going to lead you into two main barriers here. Number one, that your data is going to be handled, transferred, read, written, verified, integrity checked on an unstable uh, connection and platform. But on top of that, it opens the door to vulnerabilities. Vulnerability, something that's become a pressing question surrounding the subject of ransomware, malware and more in recent years as we have more and more data storage solutions remotely accessible, either directly connected to the internet or devices that we utilize from our phones to our desktop devices that are then connected to our NAS system, which then themselves can become attack vectors. Now, the reason we talk about security and vulnerabilities is that Synology just like any other reputable online product has its security advisory, which breaks down vulnerabilities as they are either found uh, by third parties or by sponsored events like Pwn to Own and Bounty Reward programs, and indeed vulnerabilities that are found in Linux, which is what the majority of NAS platforms, with the exception of some of the true NAS and some of the ZFS-based stuff, is based on, not counting scale, of course. So. When these vulnerabilities are found, generally in Linux, which is quite regularly, then they are needing to be patched on applications that are built on top of those. And unlike a Linux kernel vulnerability, once you've built on top of that, it can take a, you know, a significant amount of time to apply these updates. But moreover, it's going to be very important that these updates are patched regularly. Because as soon as a vulnerability is found, an attacker is going to know they are there is sand falling out of the hourglass before they can no longer use that vulnerability to either exploit people for ransom or to utilize that to inflict harm. Now, where does Xmenology fall into this? Well, as mentioned earlier on, the stability of Xmenology, a lot of the biggest hindrance to that comes down to the fact that you can't install updates easily in most cases in Xmenology. Because when you install an update, in a lot of cases, it will render that Xmenology built NAS unusable so not all updates are feature rich they're not adding new apps or increasing the improvements of your new Synology app a lot of the time they are background security patches like the ones we've just described and Synology keeps people updated via their security advisory alongside regular updates of DSM and individual applications and indeed if you hark towards the download site from Synology you will find a significant history of updates for their platform although recently they have removed some of the DSM-6 updates previously due to licensing restrictions but nevertheless it still comes down to a lot of updates that if you're running an Xmenology setup you may not be able to utilize at all and therefore leaving you at the door with attack vectors that can get into your data so not only have we now discussed a platform that declares itself to not be fully stable but on top of that, you're not going to be able, in a lot of cases, or without running the risk of breaking your setup, to install later updates to remove growing potential attack vectors that are either inherent to Linux or ones that have been found in those applications, either manually or by the brands themselves. Overall, when it comes to stability and the inability to install firmware updates, if you're going to be running a network attached storage system of any kind, not just Synology, those are paramount and should always be installed for security protection of your data. And the fact that by its very nature, Xmenology will require you to make sure none of these are installed by default leaves you at that increased risk of accidentally not installing an update or choosing to manually avoid it and therefore leave a door open for an attacker. Now, this is one I think a lot of users, this is the main reason they will not engage, particularly business users, with Xpenology. And I know this is a line between hobbyists and enterprise or just general business users where it will divide a line. And that is to do with the legality of Xpenology. Now, as they state themselves, they state it as a gray area. And if you look online on the lines of uh, the GNU uh, public licensing of things like uh, 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 of Linux, where things are built on an open source platform, there are some users out there that believe that because it is built on an open source platform like Linux, that that means it's free game. But unfortunately, that is 
just simply not the case these days. A lot of it to do with modifications that are proprietary that are built on top of that. Now, just because you've got the software then you can make modifications doesn't mean that you now have free roam with that software long term. The same applies if you go out and buy uh, Microsoft Office. Just because you buy Microsoft Office does not mean that you can now freely distribute Microsoft Office to all your friends and family with that key. Because if you look into the terms and conditions, it won't allow that. But moreover, because Xpenology requires to a degree the modification of some of that proprietary uh, building blocks of DSM, it then becomes illegal. And there, that is when, if you're running a business model, you run into trouble. Now, I'm going to give a couple of examples, one extreme, the other less so. Weirdly, the less extreme and the less worrying one is going to be something like Hackintosh, something we talked about on the channel before. This is um, the Mac OS that was modified to run on third-party hardware and not a Mac. And Apple, as you might expect, took it insanely seriously. And it did fall into that gray area we've just discussed. But Hackintosh is a more evolved um, proprietary break of the software because it isn't just the bootloader. It is the whole modification of that platform to run because there is a lot more going on there in that OS. But where there is when we're talking about copyright infringement and ownership of that software, one other thing I think a lot of businesses really need to keep in mind, and I speak from personal experience of somewhere that I've worked, are things like this. The reporting of illegal software usage in uh, business environments. I worked at a company once where the business, it was a very small business, a very, very small business, and it was using illegal versions of Windows. Now, an employee who left that company shortly after leaving the company reported that company. And that company got fined quite a substantial amount of money because of this. That business was running an illegal, um, uh, uh, several illegal versions of Windows in their business, and they were reported by an ex-employee. Now, that was Windows. Of course, that is a large-scale OS there. It's quite a big deal. Now, the same is going to apply to DSM and Xpenology. Therefore, as a business user, even if you weren't off-put by the subject of stability and you weren't off-put by the subject of security vulnerabilities, as a business user with employees, factor in that if you are using software that is deemed illegal by those who judge these things, myself not included, then there's a chance you are opening the door to litigation from third parties that's outside of your control. One of the more common arguments I find online for a lot of users that you experiment with Xpenology is they say they're using it to test out the software so then they can find out whether it suits their needs and that's why they use Xpenology. Now, unfortunately, if we go back around a decade ago, there may have been a thread of fidelity to that. But unfortunately, fast forward to now and utilizing a Synology NAS and testing it out for the first time, there are lots of ways in which you can do it, either completely for free or at the very, very bare minimum of expense. What do I mean by that? Well, right now I'm looking at a Synology NAS. This is one of my local area network. I'm utilizing a DS920+. Plus. So a number of you may be watching this video going, well, it's okay for you, Rob. You've got a Synology NAS there. That's easy for you to say stay legal don't use Xpenology well I would counter that point with the following one on Synology's own website, you can go ahead and demo their software at any time. So if you want to know the capabilities of their software, you can go ahead and go ahead and test a demo of DSM, as well as test a demo of their surveillance application on its own. Indeed, right here, I've opened them up in separate tabs. And as you can see, both of these here, we've got our one here at the top for DSM. This is our demo version running here in the background. And we've got functionality and features of the majority of what DSM can do. On top of that, on the surveillance platform, they've gone ahead and set up surveillance tools here that allow us to take advantage of multiple cameras based, I believe, in the Taiwan office there to test out the software, test out the alerts, and get to grips with the surveillance platform to see if it best suits our needs. Once again, though, there may be users out there that would argue that, yes, it's fine and dandy to test out the system remotely over there, but I want to know whether that NAS is going to work well in my environment. I don't want to have to commit all of that money. Well, 
A Synology NAS, much like a lot of products you see on the market these days due to the changing towards an e-commerce marketplace being the primary over retail and high street means that return policies exist. Now, obviously I'm sending out Amazon here, one of the biggest e-retailers in the world, and there are many, many out there depending on your region, but there's no denying that a 30-day return policy in some places even longer than that exists. And that extends, by the way, all the way to Synology's own retail store, where not only can you buy pretty much any of their NAS solutions directly from the brand themselves, but they also provide a wide range of refurbished units as well that allow you to get a lower price point into their infrastructure to take advantage of DSM. On top of that, alongside all of these uh, refurbished devices having exactly the same hardware warranty as the brand new devices, yet a lower price. If you head into their T&C on their eShop, just like anywhere else, there's a 30-day return policy, no quibble, refund there. So ultimately, using the excuse that Xpenology is being used to give you a taster of the software doesn't hold the same weight that it once used to. And finally, this one may be something of a moot point and a contentious voice in the crowd, but time and time and again, when I was researching for this video to look at a kind of arguments for and against to see if there was light in the tunnel, I will say, time and time and again, I just found users stating they started with next Synology and then they went and bought a Synology because of its limitations eventually and they're finding out more and more that they wanted those updates, they liked the platform enough to invest with in it. And honestly, as you go through, all you find over and over again is people moving away from Xpenology onto the paid platform and pay, paying for their own solution where they get the updates, they get the firmware updates, they get the security, and they just effectively get a product that's got that lifetime support built in. You're not just buying the Synology hardware, you're getting the combined hardware software solution. And again, I just kept finding more and more users saying, I moved away from it a few years ago, I started using it, and then I went and bought one when it was on sale, more and more like that. And I think that's the big tell for me. It's when people are utilizing Xpenology, you know deep down you are using an unstable product. You know you are using a product that requires a lot more time and effort, and that's kind of counterintuitive to what DSM actually is. And whatever your reason, for considering Xpenology, you need to factor in stability, security, legality, and long-term um, usage of that system and your time and energy. And I think for a lot of users watching this, those are going to be the reasons why they're not considering it. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Once again, this video corresponds to, and is just mine and Eddie's opinion here at NAS Compares when it comes to utilizing Xpenology as a robust long-term storage solution in comparison to going full Synology and DSM. I'm sure the comments are going to be a fiery place and I look forward to talking to you there. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope I get to publish it because you never know. So much cantankerous stuff with YouTube and talking about this subject. This video has gone through significant rewrites in order to get it to a form where hopefully you have watched it. So I hope that really gets makes its way across in the video. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.